Okay, I've got a piece of cherry here. Okay, nice piece of cherry, bit of live edge. And I thought, oh, this is great. And this was asked for. Actually, one of my sons wanted this. And uh, I said, okay. And I did the programming for it. And one day and then a week later, I said, oh, I'll set up the machine and run it. But I basically, I'll leave it up to you. But if you look through, proofread it. And can you pick it out? Okay, can you pick out what's wrong with it? I'm not going to tell you what's wrong, but this piece of wood is junk now. So I guess I can use the other side. That's what I'm going to do. I've properly edited, uh, re-edited uh, and produced a new image. And we're going to try and set this up in this. So I'm not going to be able to do this one-handed so I'm going to set this up and I'll uh, continue the video okay first problem these clamps have nothing to grip when you, you see they going on this undercut I mean when it was this way no problem that would go in and pinch that down so what we have to do Sacrifice that live edge, which you can't really see much from this side anyhow. And we'll put it through the table saw and square it up. Okay, now that we have a square edge, we can put that in. We can lock it. We basically tighten that down. That'll angle it down, push it down. And it pushes it over uh, to this fence. So we just take care of all these. And you get the idea. Hold this down. And lastly, this one. Okay, the work is clamped down. We're plugged in. Spindle runs. We're adjusted for maximum speed. Now we'll come around to this side. And basically, there's a whole process. You turn it on and select. I, I'm, I'm going to just show you how to start it up from scratch. I just killed it. I'm going to turn it on. E stop is off, emergency stop. And it says welcome, enter to continue. Okay, I'll press enter. Oh, while it's entering, this thing's going back to home position. It backs off. I happen to have the work such that it starts near the corner where I want it to. I know the dimensions. I know the dimensions of my sign or image, and they are going to fit on there. So we go around. We go. Oh, anyhow, here, motion done. Enter to continue. Yeah, sure. Cutting tool. Yeah, I've got my cutting tool on. Workpiece. Yeah, my workpiece is ready. USB check. Oh, let's check. Enter to continue. Select file. Yes. What's the for sale sign? No, system file, no, Rob2 sign. That's because Rob1 sign was no good. Rob2 sign has the spelling correction on it or the missing word put in. Manual jog mode? I go, yeah, sure. Now I go, am I where I want to be uh, to start? No, I, I do, I actually am in the proper X and then Y direction. But my Z, or Z, as we say here, is this way. I want it down, almost touching. So that's what we'll do. We'll go down with Z. I'm going to press the minus Z key. See the numbers change right here? So we're going down. Okay, and we go down, 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 down. Now we go, oh, how close do we want to be? Well... We've got right here a piece of cardstock. Oh, look there. I have written down the dimensions of my piece. And uh, I know that I'm going to be cutting to a maximum of 0.38 or 3 eighths of an inch depth. I'm going to be cutting an image 9.75 by 15.64. Anyhow, so I'm checking that there. I'll do, normally I do this two-handed. But, um, oh, that looks like it's pinching. No, it, that's just about it. Now, this board isn't totally flat everywhere. Um, so I know, but 
this determines in my image, it's a black and white image, the white means the spindle will be high and not cut at all. But wherever it encounters dark, like text, it will actually plunge and go. If I have some gray, it will raise a little bit. And what I've done with the image is, the image isn't strictly black and white, it's actually black, gray, and white. And uh, that's because I blurred the image. You take some text and you blur it, that means the edges are a little bit gray. So as this comes along, white, let's say there's no letter, then it hits some gray, the edge of a blurred image, it starts to go down, and finally, boom, it hits black. Uh, it'll be full depth for that portion of the letter, and then it is coming to the edge of that black of the letter, and the blur it pull out, and it will go white across and skim the surface, not touching. So it will only start to dig in when it's gray, and then it will go even deeper to black. And if you look at some of these images, well, I'll even look at the cement. The cement right here is blurred. Something like this cement image, you can see that uh, this was a blurred Y. It was dark. The, the text, you know, on printed on a piece of paper would be black for the Y, but I blurred it so the edges would blend out to gray. And that's why you see a little bit of a radius there. It starts to rise. That's hitting the gray on the letter, and I'd have to show you. But everywhere on these, even you look at these letters, they don't aren't sharp. Like it isn't like black. The black would be the full depth. Uh, would be the uh, the text. This one's actually a reverse image where it uh, uh, the proud letter was actually the black of the text. But you can see it doesn't suddenly plunge sharply goes gradually. That's because I blurred the image. And that's what you want. If you just left an image sharp, you would leave an awful lot of burrs. You would leave an awful lot of burrs and you'd have to wire use a nylon brush, maybe even a wire brush, and you try and sand individual, you know, here, you try and sand the individual levels or even use a scalpel or knife to try and trim some of the, the, the furry stuff and nasty stuff. So you don't, you want to avoid that. So, next up, uh, I just have to verify a few things, and I'll come back and we'll turn this on and start it. Okay, I just checked out a few things to make sure that uh, everything was clamped down tightly, all that sort of thing. And uh, we're not going to turn on the rotor yet, because it makes a lot of racket. We go back to the uh, keypad, and uh, basically, you notice here, origin, enter, set, we haven't done this yet, enter to set origin. And there's the z-axis, the minus, where we ran it down. So it was just touching the, that piece of uh, business card. It's just, it, so we have to set that origin. So we're gonna set, whoops, what am I doing here? Let's go uh, back, I pressed the wrong button, I think. No, what did I do here? Up, back, back. Manual jog mode. Okay. We're back here. Sorry. I don't know what I was doing there. Okay. Enter. Enter to continue. Boom. All zeros. So right now, that is our zero starting position with X, Y, and Z. And we're ready to go. So I go enter. Uh, we're already set. So I actually go back. This you have to know. Now I have a choice of process or border. And you can do a border inspection where it will just go and do an outline and outline, hey, just where am I going to go? And it will go very slowly. The whole thing will take a minute and a half. It'll trace out the outer extents. And you can just make sure you're not going to hit a clamp or something like that. Sometimes with the clamps, you have a piece of wood in between or something to help. You know, you do some different things. You've got to make sure you're not going to interfere with anything or interfere with the bottom part, you know. So, but we're going to do process. And we go enter. Now this is not a high level machine. You get three choices of speed, low, normal, or high. And a proper CNC machine, you can select those within the program. Uh, anyhow, I know from experience we want low. Because high speed, it'll just be too hard on that horsepower spindle and that little cutter trying to cut neatly. It'll go, it'll be really grinding away. We're going to go low. This is going to be about a, I estimate, a eight, nine hour job. Uh, it is slow. 
So right now, oops, I've got to turn the spindle on. Because it is actually a processing. So we're going to come back and we'll see when it first cuts. Okay. Okay, it's finally done. At the very end there, my little dog here failed to actually shut off the router. I did that manually. By doing that, there's something I did there where I got an error at the very end. I think going back to home, it's either that or there are some wood chips on the home switch. But this little thing is burnt and it is rather dull. And even though we were going on slow speed, this is a real tough go for this thing. I had three eighths of an inch depth to cut. And the way that I did it in relief, I did it sort of inverse cut. So the dark type of the uh, photograph or the picture, uh, the text, I made it come out high and the, wherever was white or light in the background, no ink, boom, went full depth to three eighths of an inch. If you can understand that. You see, it looks a little burnt. This stuff is cherry and very hard. And I had the traverse and all the speeds, the linear feeds on uh, the lowest speed that it would go, but this is what you got. So here's some tools that I use at this point. Normally I, I vacuum this first. I mean, I can vacuum this. <laughs> I'm not going to bother doing that. I take it, I tap it off, but let's just do it while it's on the table here. I can tear away. This stuff's pretty crumbly. It doesn't leave much like pine. With pine, there are a lot of little threads hanging on. Uh, ooh, there's a chip out because this stuff is brittle. There is a chip out right there on one letter. But anyhow, what I can do on some woods, if it's particularly pine, if it doesn't break away cleanly, I use a brass brush. This right here is a stiff nylon bristle brush. I'm not sure if they're impregnated. Uh, it doesn't have any abrasive impregnated in it, but this is what I do. And then vacuum it out later. Uh, I can do some things with staining. Uh, I can try and stain the tips of it or paint it. I can do different things with different woods. When I've got nice wood like this, uh, We'll probably do a, a clear on it, and I won't bother with trying to differentially stain anything on this. I think it'll stand out the way it is because of the, the height of relief that I've got there. It shows up pretty well. So anyhow, the spelling mistake, if you didn't notice it before, uh, the word is was missing. Um, and some of this here, that's thinned out, that chipped out as well too. We'll see how it looks after, but I'll, I'll trim it out, I'll crop it with the table saw sand the outside and 
that'll be it for my son. He wanted this piece right here. So, um, you notice right here, I also had temporarily on here, what I usually live, leave here is a little shroud just to reduce the spray of the uh, sawdust. Also during this cut, which took uh, approximately nine hours on this cut because it had to be so slow, um, I generated a lot of sawdust. I've vacuumed three times in between while it's running. So, anyhow, that is what a uh, CNC wood router can do, a small one anyhow. Has some limitations. One last thing I want to correct myself a little bit. I mentioned about 90 hour. I have had some of these spindles here last, uh, routers only last 90 hours before I needed new brushes. Um, but I've started to try and and then you can do new brush. Sometimes the bearings go, but part of that was I was buying uh, refurbished ones, and I think some of them just weren't that good, but you can get better life out of it. So anyhow, I've got some new, I ordered on Amazon some new sharp bits, some new uh, fresh bits. They're tie-coated, uh, carbide steel, but uh, this one's actually had a few run-ins with the aluminum table, and so it's, it's kind of beat up. I've had it for a while. That was about 40 bucks, I think, for that one. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to, to carving. It's just a little bit of what I've learned over the years. Thanks.